Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to set up WebSockets using API Gateway. We're also going to use a Lambda function to respond to incoming messages from our clients. This honestly took me hours to get set up and working properly, so I want to quickly show you how to configure everything. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go to the API Gateway section of the AWS console to create our API Gateway WebSocket based endpoint. So I'm just going to API Gateway here and clicking on the API Gateway section. And then this is the default screen that you get greeted with. We want to scroll down here and go to the WebSocket API section. So we're going to click on build here. And the first thing you need to do is just give your API a name. You can call this anything that you want that's relevant to your application. I'm just going to call this demo. And the next section here is talking about route selection expression. And the way this works is that when someone sends a message to your API Gateway WebSocket endpoint, uh, you need to kind of give it a, in a sense, API name or a path, sometimes also called an action. And that's going to map directly to what Lambda function we invoke on the back end. So to give you a better idea of this, we're going to send a request that looks a little bit something that like I have in front of you here. So we're going to send a request when we communicate from our client to our back end that looks like this. So it's going to have action as a key and the name of our route, which is going to be send message. That's what I'm going to put in the box in a moment here. And then we're also going to put message and then we put in whatever text we want for our message. You can, of course, also include some other data here, um, but I'm just putting a basic string in. So that's how this is going to work. So we could just put in the default here, request.body.action, and that'll ensure that whatever action is passed in, we will forward that message to the corresponding route. Uh, if this doesn't make sense, it'll make more sense in a couple minutes here when we create our routes and our Lambda. So let's put in request.body.action, body.action. And then we are going to go ahead and click on next in the bottom right here. And okay, so there's a couple things to know in terms of how WebSockets work uh, with API Gateway specifically. So there's a couple kind of hooks that you can feed into uh, in terms of when clients connect to your WebSocket endpoint, when they disconnect, and when they send a message that cannot be correctly mapped to a route that you have configured. And then you also have the ability to define custom routes. And these can be just like endpoints that do specific things, kind of like how you would build APIs in a normal REST-based world. For this demo, I'm just going to use one called send message, which I'm going to fill out in a minute here. Um, so first of all, I want to add the connect route. I want to have a specific Lambda function that gets invoked whenever a client connects to my WebSocket endpoint. Uh, so I already created a Lambda function that uh, has some boilerplate code, but that's already created. And all you really need to do uh, just to get this working for now uh, without the Lambda function is just click on the add connect route and it'll show you this preview here. And then we also want to do the same thing for disconnect. So I also have a Lambda function for disconnect. And I also have another one. Um, I don't have a default, but I have one called send message. So I want to click on add custom route here at the bottom. And so I'm going to call this send message. And remember what our JSON looked like. As a, as a reminder, it looked like this. So the route key is whatever is inside the action. So action, send message. And then we're using the route key, send message. Okay. And you could also make like multiple of these if you want, but we're just going to do one in this example. So now we're going to click on next in the bottom right. Now it's asking for the integrations for all of our endpoints or all of our routes here. Uh, so the first one for connect, I have a Lambda function, which I'm going to use here. You can see you have some other options as well if you want to use HTTP endpoint or just a mock for a temporary solution. But I'm going to select Lambda here and then make sure to select the corresponding region. If you don't know your region, it's in the top right here. Mine is North Virginia, US East 1. And I'm going to just grab my uh, Lambda function here that is called connect. So now whenever someone tries to connect to our WebSocket endpoint, we are going to invoke our Lambda function. And we'll see a little bit later what gets passed into the Lambda function. It turns out it's the connection ID and some other information as well. Uh, so let's do the same thing for our disconnect. Uh, so we're going to go to Lambda and then we're going to put in our disconnect Lambda function. If you don't care about disconnect or any of this stuff, you can skip this step. But And then for uh, integration for our custom route, which is send message, I'm going to go to Lambda here. And again, we're just going to select our other Lambda function, which is called send message. So go ahead and click on next now. And now it's going to ask you for which stage you want to deploy this to. It's going to automatically kind of suggest a stage here. If you don't already have one, you may need to click add stage and then uh, just add one in there. But you know, you have a production stage, a testing stage, maybe a gamma stage or something. We're just going to leave this as production for now. So go ahead and click on next now in the bottom right. 
Now this is just going to give us a little bit of a confirmation page of all the settings that we just uh, configured here. Uh, so this looks pretty good to me. I'm going to go ahead and click on create and deploy. Sometimes this takes a couple seconds here at least. Okay, so that was actually pretty quick. All right, so this is the default screen now that you see when you successfully create your API Gateway WebSocket based endpoint. So I'm just going to close this. I want to go back to API Gateway just to show you how to get back here. So you can see here now we're in API Gateway homepage. We see our WebSocket endpoint here and it's of course WebSockets. So now if you click on this, you get back to where we just were. Okay, so a couple things that you want to kind of know about here. So we have our different routes that we just created, right? So we have our connect route. And you can see here when a request is coming from the client, it's getting routed um, to the connect endpoint here, the connect path, and then that's going to our Lambda proxy. From there, the same thing is gonna be ha happening for our disconnect. It's pretty much the exact same pattern. Now it's going to the disconnect path, disconnect route rather, and it's going again to our Lambda proxy. And then uh, for send message, the same thing is happening. So all three are doing the same thing. Keep in mind here, if you change any of the settings here, you do need to go ahead and redeploy the route. Um, so you just select the one that you want to change or that you want to redeploy, go to actions, and then go to deploy API. By default, this is all done for you, but just keep that in mind if you make any changes here. All right, so the next step is to get the endpoint, the WebSocket endpoint that API Gateway created for us and just try to connect to that endpoint. Um, so if we go to, I believe it's stages, yeah, it's right here. And then we have our production stage. And then you can see here our WebSocket URL, and we also have a connection URL. And so the way this works is that the WebSocket URL, this one that starts with WSS, is what the clients on the front end um, connect to. So we're gonna see that in a moment here when we use a tool to try and connect to our endpoint. And the connection URL is the, the endpoint that's used to post messages back um, to clients from the back end. So the back end can push messages to the front end. And we have to remember that it's only going to be capable of pushing to clients that are connected. So what I want to do is just go ahead and grab this WSS um, string here. And we're just going to go and test this out really quick. I want to go to a neat little tool here uh, to show you how to connect to this thing. So if I just go and change that. All right. So this is the tool that we want to use. It's called uh, PySocket.com and allows you to basically test your WebSockets. There's a whole bunch of tools that exist out there. Um, you can just search WebSocket Tester online and I'm sure you'll get something that's very similar to this. I hope you go away. All right, so what we can do here is we can just paste in our WebSocket endpoint and this would be the same way that like someone connects from you know, a front-end application using some React library or something like that, or you know, some uh, command line library. It's the same process. So you just put in the URL, click on connect here, and you can see connection log will appear here, connecting to blah, 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 which is our um, WebSocket endpoint. And we can also see that connection has been established, which is good for us. So let's go back to API Gateway now. And now what I want to do is just bring us over to the section that has our uh, Lambda functions to look inside and see what they're doing. So uh, let's go to the top here and type in Lambda. Actually, let me just make sure I have this copied um, to my clipboard. Actually, you know what? I need this URL. I need the HTTPS URL. Um, because we want to post back from our Lambda function, we need to grab this URL so that we can put it in our uh, config when we try to reply to WebSocket um, messages or broadcast messages out rather. So let's go to Lambda now and I'll show you some of the functions that I've pre-created here. So here we are in Lambda. Um, so I have four different functions here. Let me just quickly describe to you what these do. Uh, so first of all is connect. Connect is pretty straightforward. It's the Lambda that gets invoked whenever someone tries to connect to our WebSocket endpoint. Disconnect is the same thing. It pretty much does nothing. It just logs out the input. Um, send message is when someone tries to send a message from the client to the back end. Okay, so someone is pushing a message from the client to the back end. Uh, then I also have another function here called broadcast. And this is more of a function that uh, doesn't have any knowledge of any incoming messages. It's just gonna be capable of taking an input from the Lambda function event and pushing a message to a corresponding client. So we're gonna see all of these in action in a second here. Uh, so what I wanna do here is go to connect and just show you the code that's here. And it's basically very, very simple. Now a pro tip that you need to remember is 
in all of these functions, you need to return a status code of 200 or else you're going to run into errors. And the worst part is that the errors that get thrown from the WebSocket client perspective say like really stupid things like internal server error or some other like abstract and useless messages that don't really mean anything. So make sure the first thing you do when you create your Lambda functions is come here and just return status code 200 or else you're going to have all these errors and really want to rip your hair out. All right, so you can see here that I'm, I'm logging out two different things, the event and the context. So we already connected to our endpoint, so this Lambda function already got invoked. And so we can go take a look at our logs really quick. Uh, so I'm just going to go to view CloudWatch logs over here, and this is going to launch a new page. And where is it? So yeah, I, I was messing with this a little bit earlier. So you can see um, there's a whole bunch of logs here. Just want to scroll down um, and there we go. So this is the request that we just made. So 2022, that's just a couple minutes ago. So that's right. Uh, so this is the event that gets passed in from the client on connection to our API gateway endpoint. And remember in our Lambda function, uh, if we go back to the code really quick, first thing we're doing is printing the event, then star, 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 and then context. If we go back here, we're printing the event sorry, printing star, 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 and then context, which happens to be an object that we can't read. All right, so if we, we look at this thing, like this is like pretty hard to read, but if you like look pretty closely, I'm gonna just control F and type in uh, connection ID, connection ID. It's this thing down here, right? F, U, V, and blah, blah, blah. So when we try to reply to our client, we need to specify that this is the connection ID that we want to use when we reply. Now, since this is just during like a connection step, this doesn't really matter. However, if you were building an application where you need to kind of keep track of all the connection IDs that exist at a current point in time, like a gaming application or a chat room application or something, you would probably want to save these into the database, like a Dynamo table on connect and then remove them on disconnect so that you can always keep a snapshot of the current live connections that you have uh, an endpoint to. That's how you would kind of maintain state on the clients that are connected to your endpoint. But anyways, that's a whole different thing. Just remember that connection ID is in here uh, alongside all this extra stuff that for the most part, you don't really need to worry about. So I wanna go back to my uh, Lambda functions here and then just walk you through some of the other stuff. Um, so going back to functions, disconnect does the exact same thing. It's not even worth looking at, to be perfectly honest with you. And then um, send message. So this is the Lambda that gets invoked when the client sends a message to the back end. Okay, so send message. What does this thing do? Uh, so you can see here uh, we're importing some libraries. We're also using Bodo3, which is the Python um, SDK to call um, AWS endpoints. First thing we're doing is creating a client, so Bodo3.client. We're using the API Gateway Management API. This is the client we're going to use to respond to messages. And then for endpoint URL, this was that URL that I just grabbed a few minutes ago. I hope I still have it on my clipboard. Yes, I do. Um, so all you need to do is just po post that in and then um, it's just slash um, whatever your stage is. So mine was just production. I don't think you need a slash at the end. I'm pretty sure that's going to be fine. But uh, if this doesn't work, that may be the problem. Anyways, scrolling down a little bit. So we're just printing the event first. And then we are extracting out that connection ID from the input object. It happened to be inside of a, a nested object, which is request context. Then we're just getting the connection ID. I'm uh, doing something interesting. Typically, you would probably like save to a database or do something or, you know, it depends on your application. And then um, form the response and post back to the connection ID. So now we're replying back to the client by posting a message back to the connection ID that was provided in the input. And we are just uh, actually this should just be pointing to response message here. So response message. And then uh, we're returning status code 200. Now I'm just gonna deploy this really quick. And just before I test this out on the front end, I just wanna show you something really quick. This took a little while to figure out. Um, but basically any Lambda function that wants to use this API Gateway Management API to post back to an endpoint needs to have some specific API Gateway permissions. So uh, if we go to configuration here, I'll show you really quick the role that I had to create. Um, where is it, permissions? Yeah, so here's my role. Uh, so send message role. If we click on this, it's going to open a new window. And you can see here the policy that I have attached to it is one called Amazon API Gateway Invoke Full Access. Uh, this is required in order to post back to that URL endpoint. If you go to attach policies, I'll just show you how to do that really quick. Just go to attach policies, then just search for API Gateway. And I think because I already have this uh, on this role, 
um, like uh, already attached, it's not gonna let me do it again. But you would just click it and then click next, 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 and you're pretty much good to go. One more pro tip, after you add a new policy to your function's role, you need to redeploy it. If you don't, your Lambda will not have the new permissions that you just assigned. You can do this by making a small code change and clicking the deploy button on your Lambda function. All right, so that's the role that I have on this. So make sure you have this both on your send message um, Lambda and your broadcast Lambda, which is kind of a similar functionality. So I'm gonna close this really quick. Um, so now our send message function is pretty much good to go. So I'm gonna try and go and send a message from our client here and see if we get that responding dot 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 back because that's what our um, Lambda function returns with. So let's say, um, remember we need to, to put this in a very specific format. So we need to put action. Remember this was the you know request.body.action thing when we initially configured our um, API gateway endpoint. Remember now that this needs to be the correct route name of whatever you created. Mine was called send message. So I'm gonna put in send message in quotes here. And then um, the content is in something called message. So we just put message and then just say, hello, is anyone there? And close bracket. So we should see uh, responding dot, dot, dot if everything worked here. And there you go. So we're responding based on that Lambda function invocation. All right, cool. So what if now we have some process that wants to just kind of push messages to all the available clients that are currently connected? How would we go about doing that? Well, first of all, we need to know which clients are currently connected. So like, I don't know the connection ID of this guy, so I'm gonna have to go and check the logs really quick. So let me just go and do that. I'll show you how this works. So we can go, um, actually, is this the one? No, this isn't the one. This Actually, this is the one, this is the connect. So we can just grab our um, connection ID out of here, just to show you how I got here. Reminder, we're just in CloudWatch, we're under log groups, we're under our connect function, and I, I just went to the first log stream and expanded the message and picked up the connection ID here. And what we need to do now is go to our broadcast message and take a look at what that does. I'm actually gonna open that in a new tab because I realize I'm gonna need something from our other function in a moment here. Uh, so let's go to broadcast. And you can see in the implementation here, oops, sorry about that. Um, this, this does something very, very similar. So again, we're creating that client API gateway management API. We gotta put this URL in, which I unfortunately just cleared from my clipboard. Uh, and then we have our Lambda handler. This one works a little bit differently in the sense that uh, you're gonna be able to pass an event in that contains the connection ID and the message that you wanna broadcast to the clients. So we're gonna extract that out of the event and extract that out of the message. And then we're just gonna post that message back. So connection ID is equal to connection ID and the, the data is equal to whatever's inside of message, which is right here. All right, so then if we look at our uh, test event here, we can say configure test event. And now we need to put in our connection ID, put in that connection ID, and then we can put whatever message that we want out there. So we're gonna send this message to our front end from the back end perspective. That's effectively what this is gonna do. So I'm gonna click save there. I need to just go and grab this URL because I cleared it from my clipboard. So let me just go back to my, uh, I think my send message function has that, right? Yeah, pretty sure. Okay, there we go, it's right here. So just grab this, do, do, do. Going back to the broadcast function. And I guess we just put this here. Yeah, slash production. Oh, I did production twice, whoops. All right, that looks good. Uh, so now let's just make sure that we deploy that. Um, everything looks good here in terms of the code. Let's just go to our uh, function over here. So we see here, nothing really is showing up. I'll clear this just to prove that everything is empty. I'm gonna go back to my broadcast function. I'm gonna click on test and you can see like no response here, which is good. Or we had, did have a response, but not gonna look at that. And we're gonna go back and you can see we received a message, hello, anyone out there or anyone out there rather. So I hope this was useful in getting this set up. I'll make all this code available. And if you're interested in learning more about API Gateway and AWS, check out this video on the right. Thanks so much and I'll see you next time.